Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas and today I'm going to be talking to you about making your own solar panels. In a previous video, Denise and I showed you how to tab this type of cell together. These are multi-crystalline cells, they are 1.8 watts apiece. The tricky part comes in the next step. You need to encapsulate these in something to protect them from the elements. The problem that you run into is the cost. Doing it yourself costs about the same as buying a fully pre-manufactured panel that is factory made. This panel has 36 of these cells. It has archival glass. This type of glass is different than regular flat glass. It's got a little bit of a dimple to it. When the sunlight comes in at an angle in the morning time and evening time, it doesn't reflect it real sharply like regular flat glass does. So this gives you a little bit more power. The glass on here will set you back about $42. There is an aluminum frame around this that costs $30. There's a backing on this, costs about $15. A junction box, $15. MC connectors, they're $12 a piece. There is an, there is an encapsulating method on this. If you buy the encapsulating resin, that's going to cost you $42. This is a solar panel that I made uh, three weeks ago. This panel is embedded in a resin that is UV resistant and I left, made it clear on the back with a clear piece of material just so you could see through it. This is totally water resistant and the resin on this, you use about an ounce of resin per cell. The resin is about 50 cents an ounce. So. Panel to the right is one that I made. This took me about two hours to do while videotaping. I went through the process. I could probably knock one of these out in about an hour plus the overnight time for the resin to cure. When you go to buy these there are several different ways you can purchase these. The ones that I purchased are pre-tabbed. They have tabbing wire already attached to the front. This will save you a ton of time. Putting the tabbing wire on the front is one of the more tricky parts. They cost just a little bit more than completely untabbed cells. There are also short tab cells. I personally don't like those because it is the same thing as this, but the tabs are clipped. They're clipped so short that you can't make the junction to the back. So what you have to do is take your iron and heat the wire up, remove it, and put new wire down. They give you wire to do that. The problem that you run into on some of them, you can actually mess the area up where this is supposed to connect, and it's really difficult to get them to reconnect. There are ways of just tabbing the wires together, kind of extending that. It's better, in my opinion, to buy untabbed cells or cells that have the complete tabbing wire. The cells that I bought were actually pretty inexpensive because they are broken in the middle. You shouldn't be afraid of cells like this because if the tabbing wire is put good down the front, you're not going to have any problems with it. I came up with a way of encapsulating these cells that uses about an ounce of resin per cell. It costs about 50 cents an ounce for this resin, so by the time you encapsulate 36 cells, you're at about $18. If you put a slightly thicker coating on, you're at about $25. In regards to the frame, you can use regular 2x4 and make frames that way. It will not warp. Some people say it will warp and break your glass. If you buy perfectly straight 2x4s, they will not warp. I do not recommend you use pressure treated wood, even though it's designed for outdoors. That does warp over time. A lot of people will take, make their own frames, put the glass in, and just put the cells in there. The next morning they wake up and there is humidity inside the glass. The way that I'm going to be showing you in this video to encapsulate these totally solves that problem. I'm also going to be showing you a very easy way to put these together. This is a string of nine cells. You would need four of these to make the panel. This, the first one that I did took me 30 minutes to do. Once I got the hang of it, the next one took me 10 minutes. So you could easily knock out a panel in about an hour, which is a big time savings from the other ways of doing it. I have a box of solar panel cells that I got for a really good price. They cost about 60 cents a piece. A lot of these are broken, some of them aren't. This is how the fully tabbed cells come. You can see that one's cracked down the middle. 
Uh, this one is whole. Actually, that one's cracked. They're all pretty much broken. But they will still work. So what I'm going to do is show you an easy way to get your row of nine lined up. You want to line them up as close as possible. Make sure they don't overlap. And you're going to notice that I have the tabbing wire spread. This gives you access to right down the middle. And you want to get yourself regular packaging tape. Tear off a section that's long enough to go there. And you want to make sure that your tabbing wire is not in the way. You're going to come in here. You don't want to stretch this because if you stretch it, it'll pull your cells together and curve them. You want to just come in like this. And if you overlap the edges, that's okay. Gently lay it down. Then you're going to lightly rub. You don't want to rub too hard because you will break yourself. By the way, my nails have black paint on them from painting my chalkboard. I put chalkboard paint on there. Um, but you want to rub this down. And you're going to notice it starts to change colors. That's the adhesive. Uh, to the tape, making sure that it sticks nice and good. Once it's stuck, it's pretty much a done deal. You'll destroy the cells trying to get it off. If you screw up, it's better to just cut the tape and go over it. No one's going to see this back part here. It's uh, going to be pretty much sealed. And if you have broken pieces, make sure that they fit like a puzzle. You don't want them overlapping or anything like that. So once you have that, you're going to take your tab tabbing wires and pull them in. your cells should come off just like this. These are much easier to handle now. You have your whole cell set up. I have a little bit of a space there. Next you want to wet your flux pen, which is basically means you just push that little thing down. Put some drops on each one of the little... And you can use... Uh, you may need to use a little extra solder for this. Solder, whatever you want to call it. Um, I use store-bought. You can get them with the solar panels usually, with the solar cells. The store-bought stuff, get the lead free, it works. If you do this correctly, you won't need it for this back part. I've seen a lot of people gob it on and get their iron really nasty with resin. You don't have to do all that. So we've got them all done. This is a Weller 30 to 130 watt iron that actually will get to 950 degrees if you squeeze the turbo button. It is always on. The turbo button makes it go to 950 degrees. A lot of guys will tell you this will destroy your cells. And they're right. It will if you use it incorrectly, if you leave it in one spot too long. This higher temperature gun makes things a lot easier than a cheap 3 or $4 uh, iron that you might get on the internet. Once your gun heats up, there's a little trick to getting these to stick to the junctions. and show you you want to keep tension on the wire as you pull along and this this is the broken cell so this is going to be a little I'm, if you put tension all the way through it allows it to hold the wire in place as you pass it and continue your connection. So that one is done. They're nice and flat too. By doing this you take the curve that's, that might be in the wire. A lot of people don't like to go all the way down on the back side. They'll just do the spots. It makes your wire lay nice and flat and the screw that I use, uh, this wire heats up all the way down. So if you're holding it, if you need to hold it or redirect it, with your finger, you can actually burn yourself. So we're going to go here. It's kind of hard to do this without blocking the camera. Here we go.
and that's all there is to it. Those are all the way done, and these joints are really nice and tight. If you run into problems with your very first one, what you can do, you just dab a little bit of solder into place there, get it smeared on there, and then when you come across it, your junction's nice and tight. One thing you want to make sure of when you do this taping method, because they're together, is that you make sure that your cells are the right direction and that your tabbing wire is going over. The first time I did this, I was really excited and got everything done, went and tested it, and I thought all the cells were bad. What ended up happening was I was not paying attention to what I was doing, and I started getting my pattern backwards. So I'm going to cut this one apart and show you. And I tabbed every single cell to itself. It's a really boneheaded error to make because I could save these. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. If you start screwing up, you will actually screw up the whole way down. So none of these are actually tabbed together. Every single one of them I bent over and tabbed to itself. So just make sure um, that you don't do this. It's a lot easier to do than you think. What happens, you set them down, and you get them all arranged and everything, and if you don't do it right away, you bend the tabbing wire the wrong direction. <laughs>